this uh, this evening. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Vaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Vaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. So, uh, we're going to read from the Chaitanya Charitamrita Ani Lila, chapter 3, text number 98. Loka Gati Tegi Acharya Karuna Hridaya Vichara Kavina Lokera Kaichi Tenvari it should be Loka Gati. Loka Gati. The course of the world. The course of the world. Deki. Deki. Seen. Seen. Acharya. Acharya. Advaita Acharya. Advaita Acharya. Karuna Vidaya. Karuna Vidaya. Compassionate heart. Compassionate heart. Vichara Karena. Vichara Karena. Considers. Considers Lokera, Lokera of the world, of the world, Kaiche, Kaiche, How, How, Hita, Hita, Welfare, Welfare, Hoya, Hoya, There is, There is. Translation and performed by the Divine Grace, Hila Bhavati, Acharya. Seeing the activities of the world, the Acharya felt compassion and began to ponder how we could act for the people's benefit. Therefore, this sort of serious interest in the welfare of the public makes one a bona fide Acharya. An Acharya does not exploit his followers. Since the Acharya is a confidential servitor of the Lord, his heart is always full of compassion for humanity in its suffering. He knows that all suffering is due to the absence of devotional service to the Lord, and therefore he always tries to find ways to change people's activities, making them favorable for the attainment of devotion. That is the qualification of an acharya. Although Sri Advaita Prabhu himself was powerful enough to do the work as a submissive servitor, he thought that without the personal appearance of the Lord, no one could improve the fallen condition of society. So there's more purple, we'll just maybe speak a little bit about this here and then go on. Om Vigyana Tvarandasya Kyananjana Salakaya Chakshum Vidyanjana Tarasvai Shri Bhukam Gautvacharam Pramunam Vaidegri Vipipatara Vancha Kapatu is Jack, the best in your day, which are Patitana, Pavan, and your voice. Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Chaman in Yama, Shri Advaita Vedanta, Shri Vasa Yoga, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare. This nature of the 
a, de of a devotee and of Krishna is very common, this nature of compassion. I looked on the Veda base and it's, it's, uh, Srila Prabhupada has in, the, in his books 3,577 times this word compassion. So it's a, it's a very uh, important uh, quality of a Vaishnava, is his compassion. And this compassion is here also in his uh, Advaita Charya. He was feeling compassion for the suffering of entities. And he's, who, who is it, Advaita Charya? Who is he? He's Mahavishnu. Very, he's God. <laughs> he can do it himself. But he wanted Krishna to come. So this is uh, kind of inconceivable. But Krishna, actually it's mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam by the prayers of the personified Vedas that Krishna, he has unlimited divine qualities. <coughs> to an unlimited degree. But of all his qualities, there's one quality that stands out uh, above all the others, and that's his compassion. He's very compassionate. Therefore he comes. He speaks the Bhagavad Gita for our benefit. He sends his pure devotees. Uh, in so many ways, he shows his his compassion. Therefore, he's also known as Paradukaduki. When he sees others suffering, it gives pain. So devotees also, they uh, manifest these qualities of compassion that's there in Krishna. And it's something that we should, uh, we should pray for, actually. And Krishna, when we exhibit these qualities, is very pleased with us. Actually, there's one statement in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Tadikshaya karuniya maitra jikila jantrashu samat pena chasharvama bhagavan sarpasidit. That Krishna, he is very pleased when we approach others with these four qualities. First one is tolerance. Tolerance is uh, so important. And therefore this verse uh, that we chant, that one should think oneself lower than the solid tree, more tolerant than the tree, devoid of all sense of false mistakes, and ready to offer all respects to others without desire and respect for oneself, uh, is the mood of a devotee. So this tolerance is, is, is the one of the most important qualities, because if you're not tolerant, then we can't be compassionate. And one purport Prabhupada says that a devotee, he will tolerate instead of protest. Generally, when there's some reversal, people protest. And you know, why'd you do that to me? They protest about God, why would you do that to me? How could you do that to me? I'm your servant. How could you do that to me? Why did you allow me? They protest. But better than protesting is to tolerate. Because this is the material world, so many reversals will be there. And if we're tolerant, then we could uh, uh, exhibit this compassion. It would be easier to exhibit this compassion. Without tolerance, not even possible. And therefore, Krishnadas Kaviraj, he said that this verse, Tanati peace and reach in Atharora peace is not mine, not mine, not Kirtani, it's Dharma. It should be worn around one's neck, strung by the holy name. There's one devotee that had this verse tattooed around the <laughs> neck. <laughs> I don't know if that's what Krishna Das Kaviraj had in mind, but. <laughs> But it's very important that we have this uh, quality of, of tolerance and of compassion. 
It's a very beautiful quality, actually, compassion. And uh, therefore, Srila Prabhupada, he was very beautiful. <laughs> Generally, old people aren't very attractive. <coughs> Excuse me. But Prabhupada is very attractive. Therefore, there's tens of thousands of pictures of Prabhupada. And this is the main quality of Prabhupada also. The main quality of Krishna. And it's the main quality of a pure devotee. Compassion. <coughs> Inconceivable what he did. I mean, at the age of 69, he leaves India, going to a place where he knows practically no one. Mr. Agarwal, who he didn't even know, he just had the address of Gopal Agarwal. No money. Incon inconceivable. Compassion. He just uh, accepted the order of his spiritual master as his, as his life and soul. And he even said, I, I, I did that blindly. I didn't know. I didn't know what's going to happen. Which is understandable. He's going to America for nothing. So he just uh, accepted the order of uh, his spiritual master. Which is interesting. He, 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 accept, he, he received that order in 1922. <laughs> but then he left to fulfill this instruction in 1965, 43 years later. And he said, better late than never. <laughs> so, his great compassion. He went through so many troubles in New York City, dealing with crazy people, drugged out people. One even tried to, you know, he, he approached problems with violence. Robert had to leave. Mm -hmm. So, but he didn't, he didn't become discouraged. He continued on. Uh, reversal, sometimes reversals come and, and there, it turns out to be very positive. You know? Just like he had this, uh, this uh, place in Jhansi, India, the League of Devotees. And he had big plans. He had a whole nice property there, he had buildings, and he was preaching, he was going out in different villages around Jiangxi. And he had big plans. People were coming, he was preaching, guns. And then it was taken away. I think the, uh, what is it, the uh, chief minister's wife wanted to have it for a woman's club. So what can you say? Chief minister, says, got to take it away from him, what can he say? Had to give it away. So he was a little forlorn because of that. But he's not a man to be discouraged, he said. I'm not a man to be easily discouraged. So he just took that as a sign from Christian, time to leave the country. Time to do what my guru wanted me to do in the first place. So he went to America. So that which appeared to be like a big, huge reversal turned out to be a great blessing. And when that violence happened in the, in the Bowery, that person, I think his name was David, attacked him in a violent way. Prabhupada left. He didn't know where he was going. He went to, I think, Carl Jurgens. And he said, listen, this problem. And he said, you know, we'll, we'll work it out. So, and then Mukunda found 26 Second Avenue, the first temple. So it seemed to be a, a, a great crisis. Turned out to be a blessing. Here in Helsinki, you lost your temple. That must have, that was a huge reversal. And what are we going to do now? Now Krishna gave you this nice place. much better than the other place. <laughs> so, sometimes it appears to be a reversal, but it turns out to be a blessing. 
and our book distribution also. Uh, sometimes we go through periods where people say no a lot, but that gives opportunity to take shelter of Krishna. And then we take shelter of Krishna and then all of a sudden so many people come and they're taking books. It's actually pretty amazing how, how you can go for a long period and no one takes a book. And then you surrender to Krishna and it's amazing how many people come forward and take books. <laughs> so that's constantly going on, the surrender to Krishna. It's nice. It's this uh, yeah, opportunity to, to take shelter of Krishna. Uh, and this compassion is uh, something that is very pleasing to Krishna. Therefore we say every, every morning, that a devotee is an ocean of compassion. So, if we're, if we're trying to be devotees, then we have to try to fill that, that role of a devotee. We have to uh, walk the talk. As they say, we're, we're dressed as devotees, we're chanting Hare Krishna, taking prasadam, associating with devotees. So this uh, compassion is also a nature of a devotee. So we should want, we should pray and desire to show compassion upon the conditioned souls. And uh, one way that is, is not difficult, sometimes it's a little difficult, but that's okay, purifying, is uh, to go out and distribute books. Prabhupada, he said that he wanted everybody to learn the art of book distribution. It's something that can be learned, practice. It's like anything. You practice at it, you get better at it. So Helsinki here was, was known as the, as the leader of book distribution in Scandinavia for, for years and years. And now Helsinki is not even on the map. <laughs> not good. We've got we to gotta get Helsinki back in there again. <laughs> There's nice people here. I remember for many years I was coming here and distributing books here. It was very nice. So hopefully we can uh, get it going here again. Uh, because people are, are intelligent here, they're nice. They take books, they join the movement also. By going out and distributing books, so many positive things happen. People are getting books here. Sometimes people join by getting books. They give Lakshmi. I believe you need some Lakshmi for this place now. Srila Prabhupada actually said, if, he said, if you distribute books, everything will come. So we have to have that faith. That if we distribute books, Krishna will take care. Because this is uh, something that is extremely pleasing to Krishna. And therefore he said, Ya idam padamam guyam, mud bhaktes, bhaktam param, mamad vaisaki samsay. He says, anybody that is preaching or distributing this message of Bhagavad Gita is very dear to me. And there'll never be anyone more dear to me than that person. So this is like Krishna's soft spot. Do you understand soft spot? Soft spot means if you have a friend and you know there's something that your friend really likes, like let's say uh, curd samosa, a well-spiced curd samosa. I think that's something that is pretty popular. Yeah? <laughs> so you give five of those nicely spiced curd samosas to a friend, you know he's going to be pleased. That's his soft spot. 
So Krishna has a soft spot. And that is preaching the message of Bhagavad Gita, giving this message out to others. Because uh, this is what is most needed. People are suffering because of a lack of Krishna consciousness. So we have to uh, try to help them. Now here in the purport, Prabhupada mentioned that this sort of serious interest in the welfare of the public makes one a bona fide charity. So Prabhupada uses this word quite a bit in his book, serious. And quite often he uses the word serious and sincere next to each other. One has to be serious and sincere. But these words are very similar. So I looked it up and said, what's the difference? Serious means thoughtful. Very thoughtful. So when we're reading the books of Srila Prabhupada, we should try to understand the message, not just read it like a novel, but I mean each sentence of Srila Prabhupada's books is like a slope in itself. Because there's so much realization. So much realization is being given to us by Srila Prabhupada in his book. So we should read them in a very thoughtful way, try to absorb the, the message that he's given us. And then uh, Prabhupada goes on to say that they will have interest in the welfare of the people, will, will understand what is most important for the people. They don't know what is most Therefore, Krishna says that uh, those who are in the mode of passion, they don't know what to do, they don't know what not to do. Just like us, we didn't know what to do. We were eating meat, thinking it was perfectly all right, engaging in so many sinful activities, thinking it's all right. We had no idea. Then we get Prabhupada's books and we find out, oh, not so good, not good at all. So now we know what's good, what's not good. For people out there, they don't know. Actually, these books are instruction guides for human society. Just like you, someone goes to a store and they get some, they get something. There's always instruction guides on how to put it together. There's a saying, when all else fails, get the instruction guide. <laughs> Sometimes they buy things and they're, I can figure it out myself. And they're trying to put it together you know, for three hours. And then, Where's that instruction guide? <laughs> <laughs> so everything is failing, pretty much, in society. There's so much uh, uh, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, suicide. Citizens aren't satisfied with their governments. Why? Krishna says, or it's stated actually, I think it's Pralama. Natev yu swatha tinghi vishnu, grasa yeva yarvama, and hayata yu niyama, tehi satantra, uru dhamdi bhajra. That people do not know what is actually valuable, what is good for them. What they're thinking is good for them is sense gratification. They're thinking this is the, the best thing for me. Get as much as I can. But actually, no. It's the worst thing for them. Because that increases the bodily conception of life which is what keeps us here in this material world. So they're blind. They're blind and they're being led by other blind people. The leaders are blind, the people are blind. What hope is there for the society go, to go forward in a positive way? No hope. 
So these books, they give uh, guidance. Uh, Jnana Chakshus, this is the one, one, one can see through the eyes of scripture. Knowledge is being given to us in these books. So the people are blind, they're being led by other blind people. Then, what good can come out of that? One time I was in Vrindavan and I saw this. At Roy Bazaar, there was three blind people and the two behind the first one, they had their hand on the shoulder. First one was blind, second one was blind, third one was blind. Three blind men. Well, it's pretty ironic, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe he just knew from experience, you know, where, where he wanted to go, just by steps or something like <laughs> that. But, uh, you know, blind people being led by other blind people would be chaos, and therefore there's chaos all around the world. So we have to be uh, serious, and he says sincere. Sincere means genuine. The definition of sincere, genuine, with no motive, no material motive. It's not easy to be free of material motives because we're conditioned. We've been in the world for a long time, different species of life, different universes. And we're always uh, we always have some motive, some ulterior motive. So to get free of that motive is not easy. We have to pray to Krishna, therefore, for this uh, genuine desire to give Krishna to others, to help society. And he also says we should be strict, sincere, serious, and strict. See, the Prabhupada said, you, you can advance very quickly in Krishna consciousness if you follow all the rules and regulations, the big ones and the small ones. Just like in Brazil, they have a saying that if you, if you follow the rules on the highway, then you won't get in accidents. Of course, it's, it's not absolute, but a lot of times people get in accidents because they don't follow the rules. They're speeding or they do something, you know, something wrong. Those people who follow the rules are the, the little ones that are much more likely to not get in an accident. So, and that's also, it's, it's not absolute that if one follows the rules, one won't get in an accident, still there will be an accident. But if we follow the rules that are given to us by Krishna, this, uh, called Vaidhi Bhakti, then our chances of going back to the spiritual world are, are much higher than this purport. Prabhupada says, in the grim clutches of Maya, the first class prisoners of this mature world wrongly think themselves happy because they are rich, powerful, resourceful, and so on. These foolish creatures do not know that they are nothing but play dolls in the hands of material nature, and that at any moment material nature's pitiless intrigues can crush to dust all their plans for godless activities. Such fools prisoners cannot see that however they improve their position by artificial means, excuse me, the calamities of repeated birth, death, disease and old age are always beyond the jurisdiction of their control. Foolish as they are, they neglect these major problems of life and busy themselves with false things that cannot help them solve their real problems. They know that they do not want to suffer death or the pains of disease and old age. But under the influence of the illusory energy, they are grossly negligent and therefore do nothing to solve the problems. This is called Maya. 
people held in the grip of Maya, are thrown into the oblivion after death. And as a result of their karma, in the next life they become dogs or gods. Although most of them become dogs. <laughs> To become gods in the next life, they must engage in the devotional service of the Supreme Personality of God. Otherwise, they are sure to become dogs or hogs in terms of the laws of nature. Srila Prabhupada was in Ireland given a uh, public program. About 500 people were there. Good turnout. And Prabhupada gave a nice lecture, nice powerful lecture, then asked for questions. And one person came down the aisle, had this long black coat on, and he started speaking. He spoke for about a minute, and he spoke for another minute, and devotees were thinking, what's, what's going on? And then after three minutes of talking, he said, I am God. <laughs> said Prabhupada. So Prabhupada looked at him, stood up straight. You are not God. You are dog. <laughs> God was very powerful. And then one person in the audience stood up. And, and he started clapping. <laughs> and then someone else stood up, started clapping. Then someone else, the whole auditorium, everybody stood up, <laughs> clapping. Appreciating Prabhupada's strong position of smashing this rascal. <laughs> so, yeah, people are in such illusion. I remember one time I also was distributing books. And the person asked him, so what kind of work do you do? He said, well, I'm God. <laughs> it's quite a big position you have there. <laughs> I said, well, you know, one of the characteristics of God is that He knows everything. Can you tell me, tell me what I'm thinking? He says, yeah, I can tell you what you're You're thinking I'm a rascal. <laughs> said, very good. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but I was also thinking of a number. Can you tell me that? No. So, there's so much cheating going on throughout the world. And so many swamis, they also came to the West. As Prabhupada says here, they, but they came with a selfish purpose, exploiting the people. But Srila Prabhupada didn't come to exploit. He came to give. One time Prabhupada, he was in, uh, in London, and he flew into London, there was a reporter there, and he asked Prabhupada, why have you come to London? And Prabhupada said, you know, you British, you went to India, and you took so much from India. But you forgot the most important thing. You forgot the Vedas, the treasure of India. So I've come to give that, that most important thing, that you forgot to take with you. So, the are are pleased to, to hear that. <laughs> so yeah, this is what is most important, that we get knowledge of Krishna. Because this knowledge can set us free from this uh, illusion of material existence. This maya, as Prabhupada's mentioned here. Prabhupada says that the there's first-class prisoners, there's second-class prisoners, there's third-class prisoners, but they're in prison. 
just like here in Helsinki, there's probably some very wealthy people living here in their first class prison. <laughs> nice mansions. We have our nice mansion. Christian now Lord Chaitanya has his nice mansion. We've got to fix it up a little bit, but <laughs> but uh, these people they're in their nice situation, but it's prison. And uh, they have to give up this life. And they don't know where they're going to go. They think it's all over. But no. It's not all over. The material world, it's like, a, it's like an ocean of material existence, living in this material. It's like an ocean of material existence. And you know, there's waves in this ocean of material existence. The waves sometimes push up the living entity and he gets slapped down and he becomes uh, a king somewhere. He becomes a king. And then another wave comes and slaps him down and he becomes a dog. Mm -hmm. So the waves are going up like this. We're getting slapped down. You know? Another wave comes. It's like Nehru, President Nehru in India, was a Prime Minister in India. And then one astrologer said he'd become a, a dog in Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> From Prime Minister to dog. So people don't know, generally, that they're going to continue on in their next life. And according to our karma, we're going to get a certain situation. And taking to Krishna consciousness is the only thing that can change their, 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 their karma or their destiny. It's the only thing. It's like sometimes devotees, they, they get into astrology. Prabhupada said, don't bother. <laughs> because when you clap your hands before the deities, the lines all change. <laughs> Everything changes. So taking to Krishna consciousness is the only thing that can change a person's karma. So right now they're committing so many sinful activities and therefore the future is very dark. So when we go out of book distribution we're giving them an opportunity to, to avoid this uh, dark future that they've created for themselves. They can go the opposite direction. They can actually, these tickets, these books are like tickets to the spiritual world. Why? Because if they get a book and follow the instructions, they can go back to Krishna. It's a big challenge. Big challenge. The most, uh, the most challenging experience that anybody can face is giving up material existence and engaging in pure emotional service. There's no greater challenge. Why? Because Krishna says, Daivihe Sugranamai Mama Maya Drepnya Mama Vyay Kupatnite Maya Tam Charatite He says, the divine energy of mind consisting of the three modes of material nature is very difficult to overcome. Order surrenders unto me can very easily cross the other. So when God says something's difficult, it can be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a challenge. But even though we're, we're in this uh, process of becoming purified, even though we're in the process, still it's a nice process. We're here in chanting, dancing. Prabhupada one time said that if anybody can give us a better philosophy or a better process, we'll take it. <laughs> give us something better. <laughs> Krishna himself says, Mata Paratranya, there is no truth superior to me. Jesus Christ said, I'm the Son of God. And I would tell you more, but you wouldn't understand. 
So he says there, I'm, I'm, I'm not the highest. I'm the son. I sit at the right hand side of God. We have so many books. 18 volumes, Srimad Bhagavatam, 9 volumes, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhagavad Gita, and so many books. The Bible, they have one book. Very little information of God. God is omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, the three O's. Not much more than that. God spoke through a bush. Ten commandments. Not much more. The Quran, very little information of God. Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, so much. So much information. So these are treasures. These are treasures, these books that we have. So we distribute books, we're distributing treasures. We're not distributing paper and ink. We're distributing jewels, treasures, and wisdom. So tomorrow we're going to go on book distribution. Right? Right. From, I think, 11 o'clock. Yeah. So you're all welcome to... to Tag along, distribute some books, very auspicious. All over the world now we're having something called the uh, Monthly Sankirtan Festival, which is something that's uh, feasible for everyone. You know, one day a month, go out for a couple hours or a few hours, just to stay plugged in with the, uh, with the mission. We're going to do that tomorrow, and hopefully you can... You've tried that here before, right? Or no? We've been trying that for, like, this year we had only one, but previously we've been doing that for one year, mm -hmm. trying to... It'd be nice if we can pick that up again and keep it going steadily. It's good for the whole community. It's good for the people, good for the community. Lord Chaitanya is very pleased. Lord Nityananda is very pleased. So... Prabhupada wants this. He wants us to uh, distribute this knowledge. So there's a little bit more here, and we'll ask for some questions. The third class prisoners, being less materially opulent than the first class prisoners, endeavor to imitate them. See, the third class prisoners want to become the first class prisoners. <laughs> For they also have no information of the real nature of their imprisonment. Thus they are also misled by the illusory material nature. The function of the Acharya, however, is to change the activities of both the first class and the third class prisoners for their real benefit. This endeavor makes them a very dear devotee of the Lord, who says clearly in the Bhagavad Gita that no one in human society is dearer to him than a devotee who constantly engages in his service by finding ways to preach the message of Godhead for the real benefit of the world. The so-called acharyas of the age of Kali are more concerned with exploiting the resources of their followers than mitigating their miseries. But Sri Advaita Acharya is an ideal acharya was concerned with improving the condition of the world situation. So this is the position of God and Vajrachara. He wants everybody to improve in their spiritual lives. People are actually hungry, <coughs> not so much for food, water, and they put their hungry for, for spiritual life. They don't know it. But they're all looking for happiness, right? People are looking to be eternal. Nobody wants to die. Therefore, people are always going to the doctor, right? checking, see if they got cancer or something. Checking to see if there's some disease. They don't want to die. But if they go to Krishna, they can stop disease, 
old age, death. People don't want old age either. Try to avoid old age. Now they have ways they can grow hair, right? <laughs> we, we lose it and now they try to grow it. People don't want to get old. I remember when I was young, when I first joined, 22, I had a, I had a Sika where it's supposed to be. <laughs> Up here, right? Yes. And as I got older and older, it started sliding down. <laughs> I called the senior citizen Sika. <laughs> so people don't want to get old. There's a joke on old man, he, very old man, he dropped something. And he bent down to pick it up. And while he was down there picking the thing up, he was thinking, now is there anything else I have to do while I'm down here? <laughs> because just to bend down when you get old, it's like... <laughs> and then to stand up again. <laughs> it's too old. Nobody wants disease. The pharmaceutical business is like one of the biggest businesses in the world. Multi, multi billion dollar industry. Medicine. To avoid disease. So we have the cure for all diseases, all the cancers, heart disease, every disease. And people get this, these books and follow the instructions, they go back to the spiritual world. No disease. No death. No limits. So we have a great thing, we have a great treasure. So we should uh, distribute it. Okay, any question or comment? Yeah. Thank you very much, Prabhu. You mentioned this uh, four qualities, which is uh, Krishna is pleased if you approach with. And tolerance. Tolerance, compassion. And compassion. And then also, in a friendly way, friendly way, we should be friendly. Many times in the Bhagavad Gita, also Krishna says, those who are friendly to all living entities, they're very dear to me. Krishna points that out many times in the Bhagavad Gita, also in this Srimad Bhagavatam verse. So Krishna is pleased when we're friendly to others. Krishna is very friendly. Even with Kaliya, Kaliya was causing such a huge disturbance, poison in that lake near the Jamuna. The coward boys died, the calves died. I mean, phew, what a huge disturbance, right? The, the, you know, his, his coward boyfriends and the calves of life and soul died because of Kaliya. So Kaliya is dancing on the hoods of Kaliya. And as he's dancing, the poison is coming out. Prabhupada said, when we chant Hare Krishna, Krishna is dancing on our tongue. And the poison is coming out. <laughs> Keep chanting. It's a lot of poison. Keep chanting. But then eventually, uh, his wives came and begged for mercy. And then Kaliya kind of woke up and said, wait a second, I think he might be God, I think he's God. <laughs> so he became submissive and became a devotee. And after he became a devotee, Krishna said to him, please, Kaliya, this is mentioned in the Nectar Devotion, don't be dissatisfied with me. Please don't be dissatisfied with me. But I have to protect my cows. You were causing some disturbance, so I had to protect the cows and my coward friends. But don't be dissatisfied with me. Krishna was even friendly with, with Kaliya's servant. So friendly. So he wanted us to also be friendly with everyone. So when we go out tomorrow, be friendly with everyone. And one thing about book distribution is a lot of people aren't ready. Some people are ready, but most people aren't ready. It's Kali Yuga. It's just like, I know you don't have mango trees here, 
but you can catch the example. If there's a mango tree and there's green mangoes on the tree, then you leave, if you want to have a nice juicy uh, mango, then you leave the green mango on the tree and eventually it becomes a nice fresh mango ready to eat, nice juicy mango. So most people we approach, they're green. They're not ready. So let them go. Leave them. Have a good day. Nice meeting you. <laughs> Be friendly. But there's some people that are right. They're right, they're ready. They'll take a book. Many people. We're distributing so many books around the world, over nine million books every year. So there's there's a lot of right bankers out there. People will take the books. Mm -hmm. Some are so right they become devotees. Some just starting them on their path back to Krishna. So friendly call them. And then the last one is to see everyone equally, to see the soul in everyone. And one devotee had a nice meditation. He said when he's approaching people, it's, his meditation is three against one. I want the person to take a book. The super soul in my heart wants the person to take a book. The super soul in his heart wants him to take a book. And only he doesn't want to take a book. <laughs> so it's a nice meditation on the super soul and the soul. <laughs> kind of transcend the body. Yeah. What is the best ways to start uh, introducing books to people when you meet them in the street? Well, first you have to stop them. And that's not easy. <laughs> that in itself is not easy. <laughs> Therefore, book distribution is about prayer. Who's going out on book distribution tomorrow with us? Very good. <laughs> Maybe. No, I... okay. <laughs> okay. You don't have to go out very long if you don't want to either. You just go out for an hour or two hours or half hour and just you know get your feet wet a little bit. <laughs> so don't start praying when you get out there for success in book distribution. You can start tonight, before you take rest, make a prayer to Krishna. Lord Chaitanya, Lord Adjana, please Lord, help me to be an instrument in your hands. Help me to be an instrument in your hands so this knowledge can go out to the people that are suffering. Help me to have compassion for them. Help me to understand that they're spirit souls, they're not that body. Help me to understand the three against one principle. <laughs> so many things you can pray for. So what I usually, usually when devotees stop people, the first thing that's said is, excuse me, excuse me. Because they don't know what, what you're about if you just say, excuse me. Don't, one thing you don't want to do is, is stand there with the book like this. Because yeah. they know you're, gonna, you're trying to sell them a book, right? So you just you have the book next to you. Excuse me. Yeah. Are you from here in Helsinki, or where are you from? What do you usually say? Like that. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Are you from here in Helsinki? Yeah, I'm from Helsinki. Oh, okay. wait, check this out. As soon as I say, yeah, I'm from Helsinki. All right, wait, check this out. We're showing these to everyone today. You can say one nice lady in the, in America, Mother Nidra, she's been distributing books for about 40 years. Really, really saintly lady. She tells them we're, we're, on, we're having an international book day today. And we're distributing these in 80 different languages. 
And that's true because we're distributing books all around the world. It's an international book day. Every day. <laughs> nice thing to say. And they're like, oh, okay, wait, whoa, whoa. And then she shows the book to them. And the first thing she says to them, I said, say, excuse me, the first thing she says is, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> and if I say to him, he does this too. Hi. He doesn't say Hare Krishna, he says, hi. And if they wave back, then he, the, the, they're like ripe mangoes. This is like a radar. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Looking for the ripe mangoes. Hi. <laughs> radar. <laughs> so there's different things you could, you could, uh, you could say to stop, to stop them. But mainly it's Krishna. You've got to pray to Krishna, like anything. <laughs> because uh, Krishna's in control. And therefore, there's a verse that I chant, sometimes like Java. Upadrishtana manta cha bhakta bhakta maheshvara paramat mekni cha pivyo deheshvim purusha para. Krishna says, within this body, there's another transcendental enjoyer. He's the Lord, he's the supreme proprietor, he's the overseer and permitter. He's known as the super soul. So he's the overseer, he's there when we go out. And therefore he says, Naham Tastami Vaikunte, Yogi no Vidyesva, Tata Tastami Narda, Yetra Gayanti Matbhakta. He says to Narda, I'm not the Vaikunta, I'm not in the hearts of the yogis, but I'm wherever my devotees are spreading my glories. So when you go out on book distribution tomorrow, Krishna's there, and he's pleased. So you have to pray for sincerity. Yeah. Sometimes people want to like ask him some questions and argue and discuss this and that and some different uh, our dear brothers and sisters from different uh, different devotees of the world who follow different traditions they come and at mm. least come and challenge us and like that. One thing is that you can distribute books to, to Christians. I distribute quite a few books to Christians mm. if they're kind of open. Mm. Now there's other Christians that are very fanatical and they'll try to convince you that, that you're not following the truth and, and we are and you should come and join us and they give arguments why. People like that, whatever you do, don't waste time. Get away as soon as you can. Otherwise, you'll be sorry. Because uh, just, they just drain energy. But the Christians that are kind of nice and open, you can tell them, wow, that's wonderful. You know, atheism is growing all over the world. It's nice to see a brother out here that believes in God. We're on the same side. Mm 